Now it's time for today's perspective, and they are the largest uncontacted tribe living on the planet. And now they are at risk. In perspective today, we're talking about the Mashupiru people of Peru. Now, they number little more than 750 people. They've survived, well, a traumatic history of massacres and enslavement. But now their habitat is once again under threat from a number of logging concessions. In fact, the situation for them has become so bad that two loggers were actually killed just over a week ago by bow and arrow after allegedly encroaching their land deep in the Amazon. Well, we're going to talk about them and uh, their history and this problem. And joining us now is Teresa Mayo. She's a researcher and advocacy officer of the human rights organisation Survival International. Thanks very much for joining us on the programme. Um, first of all, Survival International showed pictures earlier this year of some of the Mashu people. Uh, people. Very, very rare, these pictures emerging um, onto a riverbank in their territory. Tell us about these uh, images and what we're seeing here. Well, the Mashkupiru appear from time to time, but it's not very frequent that we see them in this area of their territory. And this was a very large number of men. Uh, it was 53 men. And if we make our calculations, we can think that this concrete tribe, this group, is around 150 people, if we count women and, and uh, babies and old people. And... It's a sign uh, that they are moving from one place to another, as they have that they have been doing um, usually, but not in such big groups. So part of it could be um, could be flying from the areas where these logging companies are operating, as these operations have restarted with the dry season. And tell us, I mean, how have they been able to, to survive for so long in that kind of environment? And I mean, I mentioned they've had a very difficult uh, history, but it, it seems incredible, doesn't it, in this day and age that they are still where they are and uh, up till now have been able to survive? Well, they have been able to survive because it's the way they have always lived and they know very well, better than anyone, um, their forest and their home and everyone... Um, has the knowledge to, to live in their own land as long as they don't suffer any threats. And this is the situation for most uncontacted tribes in the world, that as long as, long as their territory is protected and free from invaders or, or people that are destroying it, they are perfectly able to survive and not only to survive but to thrive. It's coming much more difficult, though, isn't it? I mean, as I mentioned there, we've uh, heard that just over uh, a week ago now, two loggers were actually killed by bow and arrow after they uh, allegedly encroached onto the land there. I mean, what does that tell you about what the situation is for these people? The situation is very concerning and it's uh, worsening in the last few months. It's not that the logging companies' operations are new in that territory. In fact, the uh, Peruvian government gave this land to uh, as logging concessions instead of protecting it for the Mashkopiro as the law uh, obliges the, the state to do. But the, the um, state, even when they recognize that it's Mashkopiro land, they um, so they sold it off to logging concessions and they know and the state has recognized that this is a, a a difficult and a very dangerous situation for both the Maj Kapira who are vulnerable to external diseases and also direct violence that is um, um, done against them but also for the workers of these companies and this last event was a confirmation that this cannot be, um, th th this situation ca cannot be um, sustained. And it's not the first time that such an encounter happens between the Mash Kapiro and le uh, illegal loggers or workers of these logging companies. That's why we are advoc advocating for this land to be protected. There has been one little victory, hasn't there? I think uh, one of the, at least one of the uh, uh, the concessions, if you like, for the logging companies has been suspended, hasn't it, while this is all looked into? Uh, what has been suspended is the certification by the FSC, which is this um, company that certified timber, saying this is sustainable and ethical, and survival and indigenous organisations have been asking them to cancel, fully cancel the certification, because it's 
very evident that it's not sustainable at all and people are dying in the territory. And after thousands of emails have been sent from people around the world um, to the FSC and after these images went viral, uh, the FSC had to suspend it and we are still asking them to fully cancel the certification. And this is another sign, another evidence for the government that these companies cannot be operating there. And it's not uh, an indigenous organization request or survival's request. It's it's just um, um, doing what the law, national law and international law says. The Mashkapiro land and the uncontacted tribes land has to be protected. Otherwise, we are condemning them to death. We were talking in the last uh, 15 minutes, in the last uh, half hour of the programme, in our press review about the, the terrible fires that are sweeping parts of the Amazon, notably in uh, Brazil, also destroying parts of the Amazonian habitat. I mean, even aside from the Mashku Piru people, there's also the, the argument that, that presumably these trees shouldn't be being uh, knocked down in the first place because we need them uh, to, to ensure that the forest there survives, to ensure that we all survive. Yes, and we have to think about uncontacted tribes who, who are very unknown for the rest of the world as the best guardians and, and protectors of uh, our forests and their forests because they are the most self-sufficient people, also the most vulnerable, but they are the ones that are there taking care of the forest. And it's not a coincidence that um, the most biodiversity biodiverse places on earth are home to indigenous people and are home to uncontacted uh, people. And experience have shown us that when when a piece of land is protected as indigenous land, uh, it's what is more, more effective to protect, actually protect the forest because they take care of, of that forest. And it's a way of protecting the forest of um, external um, threats and fires is one of them. Is of there, course, the, yeah. Sorry. I was going to say, is there, is there more that needs to change? I mean, uh, you know, thinking about it from the other side, if you like, I mean, we all need wood, we all use wood. I can see it in the, in the furniture behind you. I mean, some people might say, uh, you know, we have to cut down wood from somewhere, so why not from here? Specifically from the Mashkapiro land, because it's, well, we do need furniture for sure, and we we do need our things, but we also need our forest to be to stand to be there, standing for for us for oxygen and to provide everything. And this is a matter of human rights. There are many places uh, where we can find this timber that we all need that is not stained with indigenous people's blood, basically. Do you think, I mean, I sort of hinted at this at the beginning when we when we started talking. I mean, do you think in the longer term, um, tribes like this can survive? I mean, as I said, it's, it's an incredible, isn't it, that they've managed to survive up to this point. As the world gets more and more advanced, technology gets more and more advanced, is there a way of, of uh, the rest of the planet being able to ensure that people like this are protected? Land protection is the only answer for that. And as, as I said, they don't only survive, but they thrive and evidence show us how they thrive and they look healthy and happy uh, when their land is protected and they are free of threats, basically. And we also have um, the testimonies of those people that once lived uncontacted and now for X or Y reasons, they live in our um, in our society, and they they share with us their their wishes for their relatives living and contacted, and they always say, let them live and just um, let them be happy. And many of them, most of them, I would say, in my experience, they don't want their relatives to make contact. Contact always means to them suffering and death. Good to talk to you on the programme today. Thanks for uh, summing it up for us. Teresa Mayo, who's a researcher and advocacy officer at the human rights organisation Survival International. Thanks very much.